Yesterday I made a video showing a Java processing program that makes this. And I made it inside the Processing Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. And there are better IDEs, so today I want to do two things. I want to show you the same program running in IntelliJ IDEA, and then I want to translate the program into Scala, which is a language I much prefer over Java. Here's the same program um, modified so that it runs in the IDE. And you'll notice that um, the processing IDE does a lot for you behind the scenes. It encapsulates the code that you write in a class that extends pAppLet. And it also runs the code for you and I changed the screen size to be um, a higher resolution. So let's run this. Okay, so you see that that works. And now let's write this same thing in Scala. So you can see kind of a before and after a translation from Java to Scala. This is kind of the framework. You see this stuff I showed you before from the Java code. This is what it looks like in Scala. And we have this settings method here. And here's the draw method. We'll start by drawing a box. Okay, and here's the box at the top left. Notice uh, I've been doing some Java programming lately and um, I'm I've gotten in the habit of typing semicolons. We don't need those in Scala. Um, okay, some things I do over and over again in my Scala processing programs, I've um, put into um, a class called Scala Processing Applet. So instead of extending P Applet, I extend Scala Processing Applet, and that gives me some nice features. So what should we do next? Let's do the, um, let's go back to here. So we've got the background. Let's do the translate. Um, I'm going to make some other changes as we go along too here. So let me go ahead and set some things up for that. I'm going to make a constant here for the box spacing and set that to 50. That's this 50 that you see over here. And then, uh, rather than just using a number like 300, I'm going to calculate that based on the width of the screen. So here's how that goes. It's called max offset now. And it's computed from the height, half the height minus this constant for a little margin around it. And it's a lazy val, which means it's not calculated right when the class is instantiated. It's, it's, it's calculated the first time it's used. And we have to do this because we need to make sure the settings method gets called first in order to set the size so that we can use this height variable. Let's add this translate. Um, it's mostly the same as this one here. So I'll copy this. Um, so let's put that there and I no longer use off max instead I have this max um, max offset okay so there's the translate and there's the box in the center good let's do the loop with boxes the loop around the boxes so I'm going to do um, I'm going to translate this into Scala. Minus max offset to positive max offset by box spacing. So that's the range I'm going to use. Then we'll do the other translate, but remember it's got to be, uh, it's got to have the push matrix and pop matrix around it. And in the Scala processing applet, 
I've got something called with pushed matrix that automatically does the push matrix and the pop matrix for you. So I'm going to use that with pushed matrix. And then whatever I have inside these braces, between the braces, will happen between the push and the pop matrix. Uh, it's time now for the translate. That'll go here. And um, over here I'm using X, O, Y, O, Z, O. Over here in the Scala version I'm just using X and I'll use Y and Z. X, zero, zero. Okay, let's put the box, the call to box inside here. And we'll run. Okay, now we have a bunch of them. Now, notice over here I've got a loop and a loop and a loop, and then all this is essentially duplicated. So what I'm going to do is extract this out into a variable, and I'm going to call it range. So now I have this range which is a range object. Comes from the Scala collection package. And um, that'll allow me to do something cool like this to shorten the code. So I can do um, for x in that range and y also in that range and z also in that range and then Y and Z. And now I should have all three dimensions going. There we go. Okay. Let's see what's next. How about the rotation? I need a function called rotate all axes that's going to do the rotation on all the axes. So I say private def to define a function, rotate all axes and it's going to take um, and I'm going to use a symbol here since I can do that I'm going to use a theta symbol here so that's the name of the variable and it's a float and here's what we're going to do here rotate x by theta same for Y and Z. Now, after I translate, I can call rotate all axes. Then, I want to rotate over time. In the previous version, I rotated based on the frame count, but your computer could be doing other things and your frames may not arrive at a constant rate. Things may speed up and slow down. So I've changed this. I'm going to go off of time. So I've made a function, a method, called angle over time. And you tell it how many rotations per second you want. And it returns an angle in radians. So let's use that. We're going to rotate all the axes by angle over time. And then we'll say 0 0.1 float. Let's run. OK, there it is. Um, let's do the color. To do the color, I want to make another function, a method, I mean. I'm going to call it color part. And you give it an offset, which is an integer. And then it maps that offset using a processing function called map uh, from the offset's range of minus max offset to positive max offset into the range 0 to 255. Now I can do this. Fill color part for the offset. Here's X. Now here's a nice feature 
of idea. Like you do Command D on a Mac, then it duplicates that selected part. There's the color. Now we want to do the different sizes of the boxes. So I've made a function called vary over time. It looks a little bit complicated, but study it if you want to see how it works. Let's use it. We're drawing the box and we're going to say vary over time. And what does this thing take? It takes the minimum value to be returned. So the smallest size box we want is five. And then the maximum, nice feature of idea here, you press F1 and you get the help, which is generated from this ScalaDoc code over here. So min, max, and then the period length in seconds. So the minimum is five. The biggest we want is 30. And the period length, let's have it pulsate with a cycle of two seconds. Here's what this looks like. And they're getting bigger and smaller and bigger and smaller. Here's a quick summary. We took the Java code from the processing IDE and we made it work in a better IDE, IntelliJ IDEA. And then we translated that to Scala, taking advantage of some Scala features. I hope that was useful to you. See you next time.